Let's bring in News Nation political editor and anchor of The Hill Sunday, Chris Starwalt. It's good to see you, sir. Um, all right, let's just take Bernie's uh, statement face value. Do you believe that what's happening in the Middle East or here at home as a result uh, will factor large on Election Day in November? Well, I don't know whether what's going on in the Middle East will factor large on Election Day, but Bernie Sanders is right about one thing. Vietnam was a big part of the reason that Democrats not only lost in 1968, mm -hmm. but also in 1972, and why a cloud hung over their party really nationally until the 1990s. And it's not because of the conflict. It's in, it's in part because of the conflict. Mm -hmm. But it is substantially because of the reaction of mainstream people to what was going on within the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. These protests are a bigger liability for Joe Biden with the larger number of normal, moderate, persuadable suburban voters, the people who decide every election, than it is, than the conflict itself is with the smaller number of committed Democratic activists who are mad at him. Mm. What about, uh, I'm sure you're hearing the same thing, you know, Jewish Americans, um, people who are allies of them, feeling that Biden's not doing enough for them and that you know, they may leave him because, you know, as much as they don't like Trump as a person, there's no question that he backs Israel. Yeah, and you, if you're a politician, you want both, right? You, you want both your base and you want the persuadables. You want both ears of the Mickey Mouse balloon fully inflated. You want your people to come out for you, but you also want to be able to persuade. But sometimes you have to choose, right? Sometimes when you're running for office, you have to choose between your base and the persuadables. And there's just a lot more persuadables. In this election where you have very unpopular candidates on both sides for both parties, this is going to be decided by the small number of swing voters. And when I say a small number, we're talking about, well, I guess, let me put it this way. Half of the electorate lives in the suburbs. Uh, and who wins with those voters? Who wins with those practical, normal voters who don't like to see unrest, don't like to see violence, don't like to see anti-Semitism? That's what tells the story. So Biden sort of has to, he has to choose here. And there is an obvious choice about which one of these is more politically worthwhile. Ability to control social unrest will also be a leadership test here. Hey, help me understand something. I don't know what the Trump trial means uh, in terms of the, the metrics. We have a poll here that suggests that even Republicans are thinking that it's more likely, if you'd like to put up the poll, that'd be nice, thank you, um, that uh, Trump was uh, doing something wrong where the hush money trial was involved. Now, a little bit of that is because the trial is ongoing, so they're getting more exposed to it. 40% say he, what he did was unethical. Um, uh, only 17% say illegal. And then you have Hope Hicks crying today uh, about how dramatic this all was. Like, what do you think this means, or is it just more fodder for the kind of party game? Well, the, if there's one thing Donald Trump is, uh, it is, was a good television producer, right? Mm -hmm. he, lo he thinks about image constantly. When you think about his mugshot, you think about how he poses for things, you think about optics, optics, optics. That's everything that Trump is about. The optics around this case are bad. Uh, and I don't just mean the fact that it's a stinky milieu of, you know, pornographic actresses and sleazy tabloids and scummy lawyers and all of that stuff. I mean, the actual visuals and the audio, when Trump comes out to make his statements in sort of this gloomy, dingy hallway, you can barely hear him and he's behind a barricade. So for a president who is about optics first and optics last, the, the optics here look bad. And I, I do think this, I, I didn't know how I would feel about it until I saw it, but the visuals here for a very visual president or a former president are not flattering. What does Hope Hicks boo-hooing on the stand do? You know, the, I, I think it draws people in. I think the, the soap operatic nature of this, the idea that this is tawdry, yes, but human drama playing itself mm -hmm. out on this stage, it, it's captivating. And look, Hope Hicks is this interesting figure who unlike a lot of people who work in a presidential administration for a campaign, has had some celebrity of her own. I think it draws more people in. She's a compelling figure. Hmm. It's ironic. You know, I haven't been doing much on the trial, and people 
come at me a little bit for that. Why are you doing more on the trial? It's because I believe that uh, our enemies have been using the internet to drive us apart, and we're seeing it on our campuses. I think that's a much bigger concern. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.